Over the past couple of years, I've learned that being a diehard fan of a good football team can be ruthless. As a kid growing up during one of the longest playoff droughts in pro sports, I didn't have the privilege of reaching this realization until the 2019 playoffs, when my Buffalo Bills lost to the Houston Texans in the wildcard round. And two years later, I found myself in the same place, staring at the screen in disbelief as the other team's quarterback pulled off one of the most incredible last-second playoff victories in NFL history. But remembering Sunday night only for what happened after the clock read 13 seconds would be doing the game a disservice. We got to see Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, two of the game's most electrifying players, go back and forth in what will go down as the greatest quarterback duel of all time. So, as I navigated my way through the five stages of grief, I watched this game over again, and today I'll take you back through this preview of what the AFC is going to look like for the next decade. But first, I'd like to share a word from the sponsor of today's video, Prop Shop, which is a free mobile app that can totally enhance your sports betting experience. On the home screen, you can see prop bets for upcoming games, crowd favorites, which are the most popular prop bets among prop shop users, proportunities, which are the upcoming props with the best value, and you can see data from previous matchups. It's a one-stop shop for all the information that goes into making your prop bets for the week. Then, when you decide what you want to bet on, you go to the shop tab, filter through which games you're interested in, and you get a Tinder-style swipe function for over-unders. This week, I'm interested in the AFC Championship game between the Bengals and the Chiefs, so I put that game into the filter and made my picks for the week. Patrick Mahomes is statistically the best playoff quarterback in NFL history, so I feel like taking the over on his passing yards is a no-brainer. And with Mahomes playing the way he is, I expect Cincinnati to be playing from behind for a significant portion of the game, which will make it difficult to run the ball, so I'm taking the under on Joe Mixon's rushing yards prop. Last week, Kansas City did a great job of taking Stefan Diggs out of the game, and I expect them to do the same, or at least try to do the same, with Jamar Chase, so I'm taking the over on T. Higgins' receiving yards prop. Once you finish making your picks, you can go to the My Bets tab, click on your picks, and Prop Shop will direct you to a Vegas sportsbook where you can lock those picks in for real money. Or if you're not interested in putting money on the games, you can bet risk-free with game money. During the games, you can check back with Prop Shop's live betting feature, which lets you track the performance of your bets in real time. And the more you use Prop Shop, the more exclusive offers you'll get from sports betting platforms. So click the link in the description to download Prop Shop and get started today absolutely free. Before I get into Sunday's game and why it played out the way it did, let me first take you back to the beginning of the season when both Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes were coming off great regular season records and deep playoff runs thanks to their explosive offenses. Both quarterbacks quickly found that things were going to be different in 2020 because against both of these offenses, defenses were running far more too high safety shells, they were blitzing less, and just doing everything they could to take away the big play. By week 9, both Buffalo and Kansas City were failing to produce like they had in the previous season. Both offenses were in the middle of the pack in terms of offensive DVOA, yards per pass attempt, yards per carry, passer rating, and more. In the second half of the season, however, both offenses started to get back on their feet in somewhat different ways. For the Bills, it was primarily the run game. They started to use more of a gap scheme oriented rushing attack, which took advantage of their athletic offensive linemen in space, as well as Devin Singletary's skill set as a runner, and this shot them all the way up to first in rushing DVOA from weeks 10 to 18. This rushing attack added a whole new dimension to the Bills' offense. Not only were the Bills averaging over 5 yards per carry, but they were also producing on play action. That combined with Josh Allen's development into a much more well-rounded quarterback brought the Bills' offense back. For the Chiefs, it was also the run game, but they weren't running the ball for the sake of running the ball. They were doing it to get defenses back into two high shells, so that Mahomes could go back to burning them through the air. Also, one of the biggest issues for the Chiefs in the first half of the season was turnovers, and after week 9, they just stopped happening. In weeks 1-9, through nine, Patrick Mahomes had the 24th lowest interception percentage in the league, but in weeks 10 to 18, he had the second lowest interception percentage. With help from the run game, Mahomes adjusted to the way defenses were playing him, which resulted in the best passing DVOA from weeks 10 to 18. 
So going into Sunday's game, both teams had returned to a state of dominance on the offensive side of the ball, and this was reflected in both offensive game plans. Both teams knew that the other was just as good on offense, which meant that whoever turned the ball over first would probably lose. So for the majority of the game, both teams were very conservative on offense. On Buffalo's first drive of the game, Kansas City sat in soft zone coverage which allowed the Bills to run the ball well, and when they did pass, Allen was able to hit his checkdowns for solid gains all the way down the field. After a touchdown on fourth and goal, Mahomes took over, and the story of Kansas City's first drive was Mahomes using his legs. Here, the Bills are in cover one cross, which calls for man coverage across the board with one deep safety and one safety over the middle looking for crossing routes. Post-snap, the coverage downfield was tight, and both of Buffalo's edge rushers ran the arc, meaning they didn't make any effort to keep the quarterback inside the pocket. That let Mahomes take off for a 34-yard gain, where he was outrunning everyone on the field. And it would be the last time that the Bills made no effort to contain, but it would not be the last time that Mahomes would do damage with his legs. On the last play of that drive, Buffalo again had good coverage down the field, and this time the defensive line was much more contain-oriented. None of the defensive linemen ran the arc, and and Jerry Hughes eventually got free up the middle, but Mahomes got him to leave his feet with a pump fake before running to the pylon. Mahomes is really fast, and I don't just mean fast for a quarterback, I mean just plain fast. So even when the Bills had good coverage downfield, they still got burnt because Mahomes was just outrunning everyone. The Bills offense continued to move the ball with runs and checkdowns on their next drive, but would eventually punt after a strip sack on third down. The Chiefs took over at their own one, went three and out, gave the ball back to the Bills, who ran the ball three times in a row before punting, and this is when the show really started. The Chiefs took over with about nine minutes left in the first half, and after a couple of solid gains through the air, they set up for first down at midfield, where they called a designed rollout flood concept. Buffalo played this about as well as you can. The corner route up top is not open, Clyde edwards Lair is accounted for by Taron Johnson in the flat, Jermaine Edmonds is ready for Travis Kelsey's delayed release, and Tyree Kill has a step on Levi Wallace, but that window is also pretty much non-existent, or so they thought. Take a look at the end zone angle of this throw, and keep in mind that Greg Rousseau is 6'7 with a 7 foot wingspan. I've watched this play at least 20 times over, and I still don't know how this resulted in a completion. And Mahomes made an equally absurd play later on the same drive. On third and goal from the two-yard line, Buffalo called zero blitz, which happened to be the perfect play call for what Kansas City was running. Casey called a designed rollout, where Mahomes faked rolling to his left, then turned back away from the end zone to his right. And as soon as he turned around, this play should have been dead. Buffalo blitzed more than Kansas City had in protection, which allowed Jerry Hughes to get into the backfield unblocked for a free shot at the quarterback. But not only did Mahomes get the throw off, it was ridiculously accurate. He threw off his back foot, fading away toward his own end zone, and the placement of his pass was still perfect. When Buffalo got the ball back, the conservative play calling continued. They ran a few RPOs with quarterback designed runs mixed in, and the Chiefs defense played Buffalo's run game pretty well for the most part, but it didn't matter. Here, the Bills are running a design QB sweep, which tells the left guard and center to pull as lead blockers along with the running back. Now, I want you to watch the way Frank Clark and Daniel Sorensen attack these lead blockers. They both made an effort to get under the blockers, which was a great play because it forced Josh Allen to hurdle right into a linebacker. But because Allen is Allen, he went right into a spin as he landed and picked up an extra 8 yards or so on the end of the run. Then, on the very next play, Allen made an insane throw to Gabriel Davis for his first touchdown of the night. Pre-snap, Allen expected Kansas City to blitz because the defender lined up over Dawson Knox was capped which usually means that the capped defender is blitzing. So Allen adjusted his protection to slide toward that side before he took the snap, but Casey was sending 7 against only 6 in protection, so the protection call didn't really matter. After he took the snap, Allen keyed the capping defender to make sure that the middle of the field was open. Then, as the unblocked rusher closed in, he threw off of his back foot, fading toward his own end zone for a 20-yard touchdown. I know the corner responsible for Davis fell, but that doesn't make this throw easy. With pressure closing in from all angles, Allen went airborne to rotate his hips and get the ball over the linebacker's arms without overthrowing his receiver. After a missed field goal by Kansas City, the score going into half was 14-14. On the first drive after half, Kansas City was held to three thanks to a holding penalty in the red zone, and the Bills would go three and out after running the ball on second and third down on their next possession. After that punt, Kansas City would go down and score in just five plays, and I think this was a turning point for the Bills' offense. Down by nine, with just two minutes left in the third quarter, Buffalo needed to put together a scoring drive. 
so they got aggressive. On the first play of the following drive, Buffalo called a Mills concept, which tells Dawson Knox to run a deep dig route and Gabriel Davis to run a skinny post. Kansas City called quarters, which tells the safeties and outside cornerbacks to cover a deep quarter of the field. The Mills concept is designed to put the deep safety in a bind because the receiver running the skinny post has the leverage advantage over the outside cornerback, so that forces the safety to choose between the post and the dig. Here, Juan Thornhill sat deep, but was just a little bit indecisive. He sat back, expecting Allen to throw the wide open dig to Knox, but Allen saw that little bit of hesitation and took the shot anyway. There is no way that Allen was coached to make this throw. Davis was barely open deep, while Knox was wide open over the middle, but Allen took the shot anyway, and this play illustrates Allen's development better than any other. Up until this point in the game, Buffalo had barely taken any shots downfield. Allen had the one touchdown to Davis against cover zero, but other than that, it was dink and dunk all night. Then, out of nowhere, he drops a 60-yard bomb over everyone with perfect accuracy to put his team right back in the game. After a couple of punts and a field goal for Kansas City, Buffalo was back on offense, down by five with about nine minutes left. And Brian Dable tried to make this the last drive of the game. Buffalo slowly made their way down the field by running the ball and attacking the flats until an incompletion set up 3rd and 6 at the Kansas City 32-yard line. With just 3 minutes left on the clock, Dable knew that this was 2 down territory, so he called his go-to QB sweep that I showed you earlier. The play tells the left guard and center to pull, while the left tackle blocks down. And I want you to pay attention to the 3 technique defensive tackle, Jerron Reed. Anticipating the QB run, Reed spins off that down block from Deion Dawkins, then throws the center right into Allen's lap to hold the run for no gain. That would have been the play of the game, if not for what happened next. So now it's 4th down and 4, with just over 2 minutes remaining in the 4th quarter, and pre-snap, Allen wanted to go to Diggs on a quick slant, but immediately checked off post-snap because Melvin Ingram destroyed Spencer Brown with an inside hump move from the edge. Allen, of course, made him miss from within the pocket, then juked Frank Clark as he rolled to his right and picked up just enough for the first down with his legs. After a short gain on the ground and a botched screen pass that resulted in a 7-yard loss, the Bills had 4th and 13 from the Kansas City 27-yard line. This time, they went with an out-and-up from Diggs to Allen's right and a Mills concept on the backside to his left. Kansas City called Cover 3 Buzz, which is a 3 deep coverage with a buzz rotation from the strong side safety. Post snap, Allen first looked to Diggs, who was double covered, but he didn't panic. Instead, he pump faked and stepped up as he progressed to the other side, where Davis put his man on skates and was sitting wide open in the end zone. Some more Josh Allen magic on the two point conversion put the Bills up by three points with just two minutes left to play. Then, on the fifth play of Kansas City's next drive, Buffalo called two man under, which is man coverage across the board with two deep safeties. And Kansas City called a verticals concept with a drift route from Tyreek Hill at the bottom of your screen. Post snap, Mahomes threw an absolute missile right into Hill's hands, who burnt everybody's pursuit angles on his way to a 64 yard touchdown. That put the Chiefs up 33 to 29 with just a minute left to play and on the second play of the following drive, Allen stepped up in the pocket to find Davis for yet another big gain over the middle. After two more completions, Buffalo had first down at the Kansas City 19-yard line with 17 seconds left to play. KC called two men under, but Josh Allen noticed a bit of confusion between the defensive backs. So he snapped the ball quickly to let Davis establish inside leverage, then hit him down the seam for a touchdown with just 13 seconds left on the clock. On the first play of that final drive of regulation, Kansas City ran a screen pass to Tyreek Hill, and on that play, Travis Kelsey noticed that Buffalo's cornerbacks were playing with heavy outside leverage. So, on the next play, he took advantage. With just 8 seconds on the clock, Kelsey stemmed his route outside to keep Levi Wallace on the sideline, then broke vertically to put his team in field goal range. Kansas City would go on to march down the field in overtime, and Mahomes hit Kelsey in the corner of the end zone to send his team to their fourth straight AFC Championship game. If you made it this far, you probably like film analysis, so feel free to check out my Twitter, Patreon, and TikTok. All that stuff will be linked in the description. But that's all I've got for today. Uh, this video took a little bit longer than normal, so I may take next week off, but either way, I will be back for the Super Bowl. So until then, later.